The people of Israel now are powerless. They're still a colony. They don't come back and have a, a king because they are still under Babylon. So they come back and they're very vulnerable and they're very powerless and yet God works through them anyway. What's interesting is as powerless people, they are finally no longer getting back into idolatry. As powerless people, they're finally listening to the word of God. Hi there, the name of our series is Discovering the Gospel in Every Book of the Bible. And today we're going to put two books together. They are written by two different people, Ezra and Nehemiah, but they are talking about the same basic thing historically, which was the return of the Jews from exile. These not all the Jews, but return of a good number of Jews from exile in Babylon back to uh, Israel back to the land of Canaan to rebuild the temple, to rebuild uh, the wall around Jerusalem. And so Ezra and Nehemiah are both books about that and they're very, very important. And, they, and yet they have very, very similar themes and that's the reason why we're going to be putting them together. Not only do they treat the same period of history, but they also very, very, very similar, similar themes. And those themes are this. First of all, we now have really turned a corner because all the books that we've been looking at for the last um, several um, episodes here were decline. That no matter what judges we had, no matter what, um, uh, no matter we had a temple, we had a, uh, a, you know, king after king after king, things got worse and worse and worse. The people continually fell back into idolatry, continually fell back into idolatry and they disobeyed and finally the curse of the covenant that is if you uh, move away from me if you're not my people i cannot uh, any longer bless you and so the curse of the covenant the uh, penalties of the covenant came down on the people and they were exiled but now this is a completely new um, episode absolutely chapter <clears throat> in the story of the bible because here now we have the theme first of all that god's promises don't fail the people might fail. That's the theme in a, way, in a way of the earlier books. But now, God's promises don't fail. And not only don't they fail, but there is absolutely no power on earth that can stop them from failing. That's the themes. You're going to see that also in the book of Esther, which we'll get to pretty soon. Uh, because the greatest power on earth at that point was the Babylonian Empire, and then right after that, the Medo-Persian Empire. The great empires in the entire world, they were not, not only were they not able to stop God's promises from being um, uh, you know, the promise of God to have a people of God and to, and to build them up, but they were the, media, they, they were the medium for it. Uh, in other words, Cyrus was the one who sent the people back, the great emperor. Artaxerxes was another emperor who sent Nehemiah to, Jer to, to Jerusalem. And what that means is that uh, God uses his providence. He over, he, 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 the, 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 the heart of the king is in the hand of God. And so God actually controls history to make sure that his promises always come true, always come true. Um, a second way to look at Ezra and Nehemiah is actually, uh, since this is a renewal of the people of God, what are the elements of renewal? So a second theme is, well, Bible exposition and learning the Bible, which is what Ezra teaches us, uh, a very important part of it. The renewal of worship, very, very important part of it. In fact, here's one of the things that Kathy and I, my wife and I, uh, have often noticed as we're reading through the Bible over and over again, is that the exile actually does cure the Israelites. They never go back to idolatry after the exile. Anybody ever notice that? They go back to idolatry over and over and over again. Moses, Joshua, all the judges, Samuel, David, all the kings, but when they come back, they never go back to idolatry. Why? Because renewal is possible. See? There's hope. God can change hearts. Very, very important. One last thing is, most people look at the book of Ezra and 
uh, Nehemiah for lessons on leadership because both of them do really good jobs as leaders. I don't believe that's the first most important theme. I think the most important theme is that God keeps his promises and that his salvation promise is going to be kept. But it, you also can learn quite a bit about things from leadership. And by the way, what you actually have in Ezra is you have a rebuilding the temple despite opposition in Ezra. And then you also have a rehearsing the word despite sin. In Nehemiah, you have a rebuilding of the wall despite opposition. And then you have a reestablishment of joy despite sin. Because both Nehemiah and Ezra do a great job of reestablishing re things. But then at the very end of each book, it does show sin is still there and we're going to need something besides just human effort, which, of course, brings us to the principle of grace. Um, how is it that this tells us anything about, about the gospel? That's, a, that's how the biblical storyline has moved along. But how, does the, how do these two books really help us when it comes to understanding the gospel? I think the answer is basically this. Um, the people of Israel now are powerless. They're still a colony. They don't come back and have a, a king because they are still under Babylon. So they come back and they're very vulnerable and they're very powerless and yet God works through them anyway. What's interesting is as powerless people they are finally no longer getting back into idolatry. As powerless people they're finally listening to the Word of God. And I think that's absolutely crucial. Jesus Christ saves you and me, that's the Gospel, not through his strength but through his weakness. He doesn't come with a sword in his hands but nails in his hands. Um, he, he doesn't come to bring judgment but to bear judgment. And because of that, because he, 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 he's powerless, that's why he can go to the cross and die for our sins and overcome the devil and, and destroy the power of death over us and to save us and to bring us to God. So it's through his powerlessness that we're saved. And guess what? Through you and my powerlessness that we can connect to that salvation. We can only connect to it when we say, I got nothing. <laughs> when we're poor in spirit, when we're saying, I got nothing to contribute to my salvation. I am a poor sinner. I have nothing to contribute. I need absolute grace and charity. So we can only be saved through the powerlessness of Jesus, and we can only connect to that salvation through our own powerlessness, the powerlessness of repentance and faith. Ezra points to Christ because Ezra was a great teacher of the Word, but Jesus Christ was the Word. He's the ultimate Ezra. And Nehemiah points to Christ because Nehemiah went, went out in order, to, in order to bring the people of God back into the city of Jerusalem and rebuild the wall at the, at the possibility of his, of his death. I mean, people were trying to assassinate Nehemiah and there was great danger. So Nehemiah risks his life to bring the people of God into the city of Jerusalem, but Jesus Christ is the true Nehemiah because at the cost of his life, he brings us into the city of God. He makes us citizens of the city of God. Uh, so uh, the Ezra and Nehemiah, though they are two different books by two different uh, authors, show us the same thing, and that is through powerlessness you have, it, or as Paul said, uh, when I'm weak, then I'm strong. Let's remember that.